Hey Miami Lakers, welcome to our daily COVID-19 update here in the town of Miami Lakes. I'm joined by our Vice Mayor Nelson Rodriguez and our Town Manager Ed Peterman and we were sporting the new Miami Lakes, Miami Lakes mask and these were donated by our Vice Mayor. Pretty cool, pretty nice. I know he can uh, tell you guys a little bit later where to buy these and because uh, I think it's a, it's a great way to brand our community. Uh, bienvenido, reciente aquí en nuestra comunidad, estamos aquí en vivo. Eh, con nuestro administrador y el vicealcal de nuestra comunidad, Nelson Rodríguez, tenemos el, el señor Edward Peterman eh, con nosotros para hablarle sobre el update del día. Si tienen preguntas, if you have questions, start submitting those now. Si tienen preguntas, empieza eh, eh, hablando sobre esa eh, pregunta en este momento, ahí poniendo la que son, eh, Mr. Manager. Yeah, I wanted to just get started by again telling everybody the good news, right? We'll start off with a high note. We again have only 43 positive cases in the town of Miami Lakes. So that's now one week that we go without a single uh, new case. And in the last two weeks, we've only had two new cases. So that's incredible good news. It's, uh, as we always say, right, it's a testament to how uh, much our Miami Lakers have uh, stuck and adhered and paid attention to the guidance from the medical professionals. It's great news. Mr. Manager, ¿cuántos casos hay aquí en nuestra comunidad y qué está pasando? Sí, el número de casos confirmados eh, positivos aquí en la ciudad de Miami Lakes sigue siendo otro día más, solamente no ha aumentado, sigue siendo 43. So, y ahora ya llevamos una semana sin un caso nuevo en nuestra ciudad. Y en la, las últimas dos semanas solamente tenemos dos casos nuevos. So, cuando antes estábamos en un promedio de uno o dos casos nuevos diarios, Ahora llevamos solamente dos semanas con dos casos nuevos en las últimas semanas y una semana entera sin un caso nuevo. Eso es buenísima noticia. So I know we get asked about it, folks tell us all the time, it's like, how do you know that the, the curve has been flying? I think not only looking at those numbers, but looking at the hospitalization rate uh, in our community. And you see those, there are hospitals in our, in our communities that have more uh, capacity now than they did pre-COVID because uh, there's less folks going to the emergency rooms and whatnot so uh, hospitalization rates have stayed flat in, in our region which is uh, which is great great news and that's how you cooperate with our curve talking about how many people have, have gotten uh, the coronavirus or have tested positive so I think that is great great news uh, I'm going to pass it on to our, our vice mayor Nelson Rodriguez you know it's a um, it's a privilege mayor that every day you guys pick a different location and today happens to be Costco and Costco has been amazing to, to Miami Lakes and to, to the town and to us, the staff, keeping the doors open, keeping the business running. Um, I talked to them a couple weeks ago. I, I asked them to bring people inside so that they're not exposed to the heat so much. So the line that you see outside, it's twice as long inside, but at least you're inside inside Costco. And Giselle, uh, the manager, has been great. Um, and so, you know, they, they've been great and they're participating in wearing the mask. And that's the biggest thing. And I think that's, that's a, a, a great indication of why we haven't had any numbers increase. People are understanding the concept of wearing the mask and protecting themselves, and that's really important. So, como le dije al alcalde, aquí estamos en Costco, y gracias a Dios que ellos nos abrieron la puerta y siguen teniendo la puerta abierta todos los días para poder comprar aquí. Y una de las cosas más importantes que hicieron en Costco fue eh, que yo le hablé a ellos y le pedí que entraran la línea para adentro para que las personas no sufrieran tanto calor afuera. So, eh, cuando usted ve línea en, afuera, hay, hay línea adentro en el aire acondicionado. So, no le coja miedo, no va a estar tanto tiempo en la línea afuera porque va a poder entrar a Costco y muchas de las tiendas están haciendo lo mismo con eso. Uh, al final del día, yo creo que es importante que seguimos la educación de, de mantener las máscaras, lavándonos las manos. Uh, se ve que los números están eh, un, una semana sin tener una persona infectada nueva. Eso es increíble y se ve que ya en Miami Lakes Entendemos el concepto de mantener la máscara y lavarnos las manos y tenemos que seguir con esto hasta que llegue el día que lo, lo, los científicos nos digan ya no tienen que ponerse las máscaras. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And a um, couple questions I want to ask our town manager. Mr. Manager, we reopened the parks on Wednesday. Our three major parks, uh, Miami Lakes Optimus, Royal Oaks, and Park West. Have there been any incidents? Has it? Had, what's been the reaction of our residents? Have you know what? Are, what are your thoughts? What are you hearing from our staff members? No, I think thank God our uh, residents, similar to the uh, way they've uh, stuck to 
the medical uh, advice with regards to social distancing and uh, facial coverings and so forth, they have uh, been incredible with regard to the uh, the, op the reopening of the parks over the last, uh, today's the third day. We started Wednesday, uh, today's day number three, and we've been incident free. Uh, it's great news. So, eh, desde el miércoles nosotros volvimos a abrir los parques, los tres parques más grandes de nosotros, el Royal Oaks Park en la 87 Avenida, el Miami uh, Lakes Optimist Park que queda en la 67 Avenida, y también el Picnic Park West que queda en la 82 Avenida. So, esos tres parques para actividades pasivas están abiertos y no ha habido ningún incidente. Gracias a Dios, los residentes de Miami Lakes igual que eh, se portaron con la, la sugerencia de cubrirse la cara y mantener el distanciamiento social. En los parques no ha habido incidentes y eso estamos de lo más orgullosos de nuestro residente y nuestra ciudad. Una, una pregunta que en la question that was asked of me today, manager, and you're the perfect person to answer this, is while you're aggressively running and training in the park, and some people want to get back to running, do they have to wear the mask while they're running in the park? No, I, I think that the guidance has been from the beginning that if you're doing strenuous exercise, like jogging or running, it's not advisable because of the you don't get enough oxygen in your lungs. We don't want anybody passing out. So when you, if you're doing a strenuous exercise, we don't advise that you wear the mask. Just maintain social distancing. Uh, it's only when you're doing more casual things like just walking a trail or things of that nature that it's advisable to continue wearing the mask. So the question was if you're running or doing exercise in the park, there's no need to maintain the mask while you're alone. Y eso es lo, lo más importante, la distancia. Uh, porque hoy me preguntaron eso mismo. Eh, si está caminando y está caminando con su familia, que es la única persona que puede tener al lado de usted, entonces sí, les recomendamos que ponga la máscara, porque así cualquier persona que le, que le venga por el lado y te, o esté atrás de usted ya está protegido. Gracias. So thank you, Miami Lakers. And if you have any questions, start submitting those now. Uh, just a recap of, uh, of last night's uh, special call meeting. Uh, we passed a resolution uh, requesting that the governor and our county mayor allow the town's economy to reopen on Monday uh, following the same order that the governor put in place uh, for the rest of the state. So the governor put an order in place that areas like Orlando, Hillsborough, uh, Jacksonville, you know, all those areas throughout the state are going to be able to reopen on Monday, obviously with very, very strict rules. And that I want to repeat. It's not just a reopening of the economy, uh, turning it off from one day or the other. The governor has laid out some very strict rules, but he took out uh, the Tri-County area, which is Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade County. And the council last night asked, hey, uh, can the governor and the, the county mayor allow us to um, to reopen on Monday? So- uh, And you're talking about phase one opening, correct? which is with the very 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 strict right, right, rules right and that's and that's one of the things that was asked again today was what phase is miami lakes requesting from a special council meeting the special town meeting we called last night and then at your recommendation it was phase one so that people understand with all the restrictions that everywhere in the state has but it's important because one thing i and i and i know i was talking to the manager earlier and i think we've seen the reports uh the unemployment rate in Northwest Miami-Dade County uh, is one of the highest in the entire nation uh, due to COVID-19. And I think there is a balance where we can protect people, but start very slowly to open up businesses uh, and helping get people back to work and seeing how that's going. Something else that the council talked about last night that Georgia did uh, was that we passed a resolution that once we open a, that, that uh, and this is exactly what the state of Georgia did, that people in the service industry that they'll continue receiving their their uh, their benefits, their unemployment benefits, because you don't know, we don't know what the consumer demand is going to be coming right back up. So you don't want some of these folks to, to get rehired, work in the service industry. The demand is low, and we're going back to, to phase one. So what Georgia did was allowed for a longer process, which I and when it comes to unemployment benefits, which is very very important uh, as we head into this transition. Uh, the other the other thing I that we passed last night uh, there were several things but the main items that we passed last night was what to begin having the discussions to start having city council meetings again at, uh, at town hall to begin towards that normalcy we'll see where it goes I know there's a county order that says we can only have uh, I believe 10 people in a governmental building at a time so 
Uh, those are those are things that that, uh, that we're looking at. Y para decirlo en español, uh, varias cosas pasaron anoche. Pasamos una resolución pidiendo al gobernador y al alcalde de condado que, pa, que si podemos reabrir nuestra economía, obviamente como el gobernador lo está haciendo en las otras partes del estado, como Orlando, Jacksonville, Tampa, que lo están haciendo de una manera que todo el mundo va a estar eh, safe, que tiene que tener las cam la máscara y, y todo eso, pero le pedimos eso al alcalde de condado. También le estamos pidiendo al Estado que los beneficios de desempleo eh, que, que, estén, que hagan lo que hicieron en Georgia. So Georgia reabrió, pero las personas que trabajan en la industria de servicio que vamos a dejar lo que se queden con los beneficios de desempleo por las primeras eh, varias semanas para ver si la demanda del consumidor sigue ahí. So esa es una cosa bien grande que tenemos que, que hablar. Y la, la otra cosa que se habló anoche es que vamos a ver si cuando podemos reabrir el ayuntamiento ya el, el ayuntamiento para servicios se va a reabrir el lunes pero cuando podemos empezar teniendo reuniones del consejo otra vez para empezar eh, la transición para llegar normal eh, eh, pa, otra vez eh, vice mayor I see a lot of folks on here saying hey they want one of these masks how do they get a mask you know one of these Miami Lakes uh, logo I'll uh, I'll get I'll get with the I'll get with the uh, our communications department and um and we'll get the information and we'll have it put up on our website so they can purchase them um if they want to go through me they can just contact me at my town email it's uh, rodriguez n at miami lakes dash fl dot gov go to our town website and you can and look under uh council my email's there send me an email um, i have a few extra right now but um i'm probably going to run out pretty quick But let me know. They're they're fairly reasonable. I think they're on, under eight dollars for the mask, and they have the logo. Or if not, I can I can give you the name of the manufacturer directly. Um, again, it, it's not a local business, but it is a business that is in uh, that is trying to keep their employees employed. Bisacalde, muchas personas me están preguntando dónde se puede encontrar la la máscara. Dónde se puede encontrar esta máscara. La máscara que hicimos con el logo de Miami Lakes. Eh, si quiere mandarme una, un, mail, un correo electrónico, puede hacerlo por la, por la computadora. Vaya a la, a, a, a la página de, de la ciudad y baja donde dice gobierno y concejal y vas a ver mi nombre ahí. Mándame un email okay. eh, y entonces podemos ponerlo por así. Y, y, y voy a tratar de, de ordenar para la ciudad. Uh, dependiendo de las órdenes, quiero ordenar. Eh, junto con todo el mundo, pero no, no quiero hacer una orden enorme, entonces no se venden y, 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 y pierdo el dinero. Yo lo voy a vender al costo que nos costaron. Les puedo enseñar todos los documentos, pero uh, mándame un email electrónico y vamos a ver lo que podemos hacer. Si no, lo podemos tratar de poner en el Facebook, uh, en, el, uh, en la página de, de la ciudad y posiblemente ponerlo en el Facebook de nosotros en el futuro para que pueda ordenarlo. Thank you, Mr. Manager. You want you have any closing comments? I do know, Miami Lakers, that uh, this weekend we won't be doing the Facebook Lives. We'll be transitioning. Uh, since City Hall reopens on Monday, we're going to be going back to uh, our normal life, not in the city uh, as, as a whole, but at City Hall. Sorry about that. Uh, but at City Hall, since we're restarting on Monday, we're going to go back to a regular cycle of Facebook Lives. So we're not going to be doing them on Saturday and Sundays any longer. We're going to restart again Monday through Friday. That we will continue doing, correct, Mr. Manager? Yes, sir. So, eh, reciente aquí en nuestra comunidad, este fin de semana no vamos a estar haciendo la video en vivo, pero eh, empezando el lunes, porque ya el ayuntamiento se está reabriendo eh, para los servicios otra vez, de, para todos los residentes, vamos a empezar haciéndolo el lunes, a, de lunes a viernes, está haciendo estos videos en vivo. Uh, so no lo vamos a hacer más en los fines de semana, Mr. Manager. Yeah, I, Mr. Mayor, uh, I, I do agree the, with the new uh, position of not doing these on weekends, but I, I, I assume you'll agree with me that if there is something significant that breaks on a Saturday or Sunday, don't think that we're going to disappear. If there's something significant, a new bit of news, whether it's good or bad, hopefully all good, uh, and it breaks on a weekend, we will come back to you on a Saturday or Sunday and give you that information. But right now, it seems like we're almost like in a status quo, moving in a, in a positive direction. Uh, so I just wanted to make that uh, that clear. Para todos lo, lo, la gente que están viendo este video, que aunque nosotros no vamos a hacer este video uh, eh, constantemente los sábados y los domingos, pero si hay al, alguna noticia importante 
que se da, que nos enteramos un sábado, un domingo, sí vamos a venir para darle esa noticia enseguida, uh, pero normalmente ahora, de ahora en adelante va a ser lunes a viernes. Y para repetir lo que dijo el alcalde, el lunes ya vamos a volver a abrir las puertas del ayuntamiento. So, ahí vamos a estar, igual que hemos estado sirviendo a todos los residentes hasta ahora, virtualmente, ahora vamos a estar en persona. Lo que sí le pedimos es cualquier tipo de negocio con la ciudad que se pueda hacer electrónicamente, por favor, háganlo a través del teléfono, email, internet, todo se puede hacer uh, virtualmente. I just want to finish by saying that Monday uh, we will reopen the doors to town hall. Our staff will be on hand there. Uh, any uh, business that can be done uh, electronically, we ask that we do that to limit the exposure to both the visitors and the staff there at town hall. So anything you can do via telephone or an email or the town website, please continue to do that. Hey, Lydell, I see you bring up a great point, something we're talking about. Obviously going back to life as normal, meaning uh, going completely back to normal, obviously we need uh, mass testing and I think that's the direction we're heading. We're, we're testing at a higher rate than, uh, than most places, right, in South Florida and, and, and around the United States. Um, but we need more and more of that. Obviously, we're starting to see what the governor did, which is, to me, is the key, uh, which is go is allowing pharmacists to uh, to do these tests. The other thing is now at all the regional centers, it's not only set up for seniors. It's all the tests are also allowed for people uh, in many cases that are asymptomatic, uh, regardless of age. Um, so you're starting to see that happen throughout the county, which was very a very very important move. Because obviously with more tests, the more data, the better it is. But we do know that with the prop, here, here is a, a, a fact, and I think one that we all know, with proper uh, PPE, with a, with a mask, uh, with gloves, with taking proper precautions, washing your hands, etc., trying to keep your distance wherever, whenever possible, uh, you really see the infection rate uh, go down. I think that is one of the reasons why we've seen uh, the curve, especially in Miami Lakes, flattened because people are going out and about we're here at Costco and you see everybody in line if you see back there everybody's in line going in they're wearing PPE uh, they're going in they're wiping down their carts they're going home they're wiping down uh, even even the, the cartons that things have come in and people already think about it, it's been almost two months of this exercise that we're all going through in terms of understanding what the coronavirus is all about and I think our population especially here in the lakes is very well prepared in terms of everybody knows that you got to wear a mask, gloves, proper PPE, social distancing. Um, yeah, one of the biggest things, Mayor, you said you hit it the nail on the head. You know, we're doing so good. We're flattening the curve. We can't stop now on uh, people laxing and not wearing their mask and their pro proper protective uh, equipment. And it's so important that we continue to do the important hand washing and wearing the mask. Eh, una cosa que dijo la alcalde que es bien importante, ahora que nos estamos normalizando un poquitico, eh, precisamente cubriendo las oficinas de nosotros, la, la, la oficina de la alcaldía uh, y el ayuntamiento, es importante que no nos olvidemos que tenemos que seguir con las máscaras y seguir lavándonos las manos. Eh, ya hemos llegado a un punto que eh, no tenemos personas nuevas que están cogiendo la infección y queremos seguir eh, esa, ese tren. Por favor, sigan lavándose las manos, sigan con las máscaras, es muy importante hasta que los expertos no digan que no lo tienen que ponerse más. Enrique Ricabal is saying, what are you doing to help people who have not received uh, their own employment benefits? So last night, Enrique, the council, we were taking up a resolution requesting that the state uh, ensure that that the, the benefits, the unemployment benefits were retroactive to, to March 9th. That's something the state in between our count, putting it on the agenda, our council meeting, the state is going to be doing. Uh, ensuring that that it goes back to when the the order was put in place, which is very very important. The other thing too, when we talk about uh, unemployment benefits, is to ensure that when our economy goes back to normal, that we do what Georgia did, right? Is to extend, especially for people in the service industry, extend those benefits as long as possible. So when we do restart, that if the consumer demand isn't there, that they're still receiving those benefits uh, for as long as possible until the economy ramps up while they have their job. And I think that's Georgia did the right thing, and I hope uh, we follow suit. Uh, but you're right, it's been a very tough time. We see it every day here in the town of Miami Lakes uh, in terms of what's happening. You, you couldn't imagine the amount of folks in Florida applying for, for unemployment benefits and the system really having those those issues because the amount of folks do uh, applying at the same time. So 
we're with you. Anything we can be of service, you know, reach out to us, send us an email. We'll put you in touch with our state representatives, our state senators. Uh, whatever we can do, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll make those connections, and, and I know we're here to, uh, to help. Enrique quería saber qué estamos haciendo con los beneficios del desempleo aquí en nuestra comunidad. Eh, obviamente, eso es, un, es un tema de, del estado de la Florida, pero anoche estuvimos hablando de eso, que queremos ver que los beneficios sean, real, eh, sean desde el día marzo 9. Ya eso es algo que hizo el Estado, so ya hablamos de eso, pero también que hacemos lo que hizo Georgia, es que tener los beneficios eso eh, sí eh, retroactivo hasta marzo 9 pero cuando las personas específicamente las personas que trabajan en, el, en los sector de servicios eh, en el service sector que those folks eh, que tengan sus beneficios para cuando la, la economía empiece que es que cuando cuando empiece que si la demanda del consumidor no está ahí que siguen recibiendo es, esos beneficios que no se los quiten en ese momento eso es algo que hizo Giorgio muy bueno y yo pienso que debemos que debemos ser a, eh, también. Eh, Lupe, exactly. Uh, we're we're uh, we're talking about that. I don't think you'll see uh, the movie theater in our town. Uh, I think that's probably one of the last phases for 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 the movie theater reopening. Even if we were to reopen our economy, just say on Monday, the governor said, "Hey, to reopen." I don't think I think movie theaters and those types of places will be very difficult to. Uh, to reopen. Yeah, the state of Florida issued a uh, three-phase plan that talks about what are the things that are going to open up at the first phase, which is what they're starting Monday. Miami Day, Broward, and Palm Beach are not included in that first phase, but then they're going to have three phases. So phase one, two, and three, and they're going to do the, it's the baby steps, right? It's one step at a time. They're going to do phase one, and then they're going to monitor and make sure that we don't get that second spike in the uh, in the virus. And then they'll eventually move on to phase two and eventually phase three. Phase three is where everything comes back in the economy. So phase two, I think, is going to be that transitional one where you'll see, you'll see restaurants, uh, uh, bars, uh, stores with limited amount of capacity allowed inside. And I believe that the theaters and places like that of cong congregating a large number of people will probably be in the third phase. Yeah, so I see there's another question from a dude said too about the theaters. I know it's very difficult. We all want to see that go back to normal, but that is definitely an indoor space. Uh, and I think you've seen some of the studies that talk about indoor spaces and, and the infection rates uh, in, in indoor spaces compared to being outdoors and all that. So especially in movie theaters, it's going to be a very difficult one. It's going to be a, a lengthy process, I think, for movie theaters. Yeah. Um, I apologize, forward. Mayor, for stepping out, but we got a little uh, swarm of gnats that just attacked us here. Um, Mayor, one thing that I want to remind people, if you want to be tested, if you want to be tested, you got to call, you can call and make an appointment, 305-268-4319. It's free, it's at Emilia Hart Park, and you can call and make an appointment. Si quiere coger el examen de COVID, a ver si, si, está, si han tenido la infección, pueden llamar y hacer un appointment, está localizado en el Parque Amelia en Hialeah, 305-268-4319. 4319. So thank you, Miami Lakers. And again, I know there's there's a lot of folks having uh, issues uh, through the unemployment. Reach out to us, send us your info. That's something we do not control. So we it, we're more advocates on that end. So even if you send us an email, uh, we'll put you in touch with our state representatives that represent the town of Miami Lakes and our state senator that represents the town of Miami Lakes will forge your information uh, to them because I know that's something that they definitely can, can work and look at, look at uh, talk to the folks uh, that are running these programs up in, uh, in Tallahassee. Uh, let's see, do we have any other questions? I don't see any other questions. Vice Mayor, you got anything else? Or manager, no, thank you, you Miami Lakers, and, and stay safe this weekend. Um, you know, the parks have opened, the marinas are open, but you gotta have, you gotta read the restrictions and, and read the rules. Make sure that we, we continue to keep that path that we're going on, wearing our mask and protecting ourselves so that we can stay positive and get to the next phase of, uh, of phase two of the opening in the state of Florida. Maybe we'll be part of our phase one soon with the governor recognizing that not just Miami Lakes, but all of South Florida is taking this seriously. Lo que le dije que tengan cuidado este fin de semana. Es importante que mantengan las máscaras y los parques han abierto para personas caminando y hacer ejercicio y las marinas han hecho para, abierto para los botes pero tenemos que mantener nuestro cuidado mantener las máscaras indicarle 
al estado de la Florida, que, podemos, que sabemos lo que estamos haciendo, que seguimos con los números bajando en la inspección para poder en, en, entonces abrir todos los negocios y entrar a las, a las tres fases. La fase número uno, que todavía no estamos, nosotros no tenemos el privilegio de tener, pero creo que es importante eh, que el Consejo discutió eso ayer, eh, mandándole una carta a la, a la, a la, a la, al gobernador pidiéndole que por favor dejen que Miami Lakes abra por la fase número uno. ¿Vale? Um, that's it, sir. All right, thank you, Miami Lakers. Reach out to us tomorrow, mañana, at 9 o'clock in the morning at Miami Lakes United Methodist. If you know anybody that needs some extra help, they need some extra food, we'll be hosting a farm share at Miami Lakes United Methodist Church at 9 o'clock in the morning. A las 9 de la mañana, mañana, tenemos un evento grande de distribución de, de comida en la iglesia Miami Lakes United Methodist Church. That is the famous Pumpkin Patch Church, La Iglesia de la Calabaza. Uh, so be sure that we see you all uh, there, or, or please spread the word to any neighbors, anybody you might know that lives here in Northwest State that needs a little bit of extra help. But reach out to us, call us at City Hall. We're here for you. We got your back, and together we will get through this. God bless you, Miami Lakers, and have a good weekend.